Hi everyone, Nick Kratikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor, and tonight you're watching me on Bodabra, and we have lots of Christmas bows and a candy cane to make with you all. So, uh, as you can see, I have an assortment of ribbon on my table. I've already pre-started our candy cane so we can work as fast as we can. But we're going to be using our large Bodabra tonight, and behind the camera is Alex, and today's Alex is... First day off in several days, you know. It's been a while since you've had a day off. <laughs> so let's all thank her uh, for being down here and helping me record. You guys know it's no easy job, and my family is very, very helpful in helping me each and every night. So again, our large Bodabra, along with our Bodabra wires. So today the wire I'm going to be using is the silver, and it comes in either red or silver, uh, not red or silver, gold or silver, and it's a 100-yard spool. And this is what it looks like in case you're interested. So first and foremost, uh, Amazon as well as Michael's is sold out, but you can be uh, you can be purchasing your Bodabra from Hobby Lobby as well as Bodabra.com, um, and they will restock the others, you know, relatively soon. So we're just gonna cut a length of wire. My biggest recommendation, whenever you cut wire or you know a pipe cleaner or whatever you're doing, cut it longer than you might anticipate. And the reason for that is is you never know exactly how long you're gonna need it, and you're better off you know wasting you know, a foot than having to cut a whole, you know, additional four feet. So I'm just going to take it and on the top of my Bodabra, there's a slit going right across and I'm just taking my wire, placing it directly in the middle. I did fold my wire in half uh, so that we have a loop on one side and two open ends on the other. That's going to be important in one kind of one way where we're going to tie it off, but it doesn't matter which way we tie it off. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. As you guys come in, let me know where you're watching from. Lots of people saying hi. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And also, if you don't mind giving this video a like and a share right off the bat, I would greatly appreciate it. But Did you share on your page? Um, I, Bella's going to do that right now. So uh, we're going to take some of this ribbon. This is a two and a half inch ribbon, and it's one of my favorites. I've actually used this uh, not on Bodabra, but on Nick's Seasonal Decor, and I really, really like it. So yeah, it's it's been shared. So we're going to just take this ribbon and work it on our Bodabra. You can have it pre-cut like this. So to make yourselves, you know, make your life a little bit easier, you can actually have all of your ribbon pre-cut. Uh, you know, that way you know exactly how long you're cutting it. But truth be told, between us, I don't measure. It doesn't make a huge difference. If you're an inch or two off, it's not gonna really matter. And especially with this technique, I actually prefer my tails to be a little bit, you know, different lengths. So as you can see, look at how much longer one tail is than the other. So I don't measure, uh, but you know, I know a lot of you guys would like that comfort of knowing exactly how long your ribbons are. Uh, two of which you can always just have them pre-cut and then work them in really quickly into your Bodabra. We have Cindy from Michigan, Carla from Ohio, Jimmy from Texas, Steph from Delaware, Jill from Wisconsin. Welcome everyone. So also, Bodabra is giving away a free roll of scrunchie ribbon. So comment down below that you would like to win and stick around because in the final five minutes or so of this video, uh, Bodabra will be drawing one lucky winner. So stick around, you know, who, who knows who could it be? It could be any one of you guys and who wouldn't like a free roll of ribbon? So we have some exciting news coming up too. I'm not ready to share it yet, you guys, uh, but we should be able to talk about it next Monday live. But just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of excitement. So <laughs> we're just working in lots and lots of the, uh, this ribbon. And keep in mind one thing, the more loops and tails you have, the more full and kind of luxurious uh, your bow will be, but we don't necessarily always want a super full bow. You know, more often than not, I make my bows a little bit thinner. That way I can tuck in other products in between the loops. I'm a firm believer in making sure that everything I add into my designs uh, has its place and also looks as though it's been kind of like part of it. So by working in some greenery and some flowers between your loops, it really creates a nice effect. So we have, let's just do one more. Let's do one more. Jackie says that's gorgeous ribbon. Isn't it? So this is Sam's Club, you guys. So if you're decorating presents, you're decorating your Christmas tree, you know, go budget friendly. These rolls are 50 yards for $7, 7 or $8 or so. You can't go wrong, uh, especially with the quality of this one. This one's one of the nicest ribbons. So that's it. We have three loops on either side, or actually two on this side, three on this side, and it's not going to make a huge difference. So earlier in the video, I was talking about how um, we have two open ends of wire on one side and then one loop, and we're going to take either side, so we can take this side and bring it to the other side, or what we can also do is take this side. It doesn't make a difference as long as you take one to one side, whatever's easiest for your hands to go through. Kind of create a little tug on it because it is kind of a loop so it pulls out really easily now and there we go are we finished with this yet alex nope all right so we have to <laughs> tie off the wires you guys 
that's definitely a step you can't forget. I know we, you know, often get caught up in things and, you know, forget lots of things. Maybe a dovetail, because I always seem to miss a dovetail or two. But when it comes to tying off your bows, that's something you can never forget, because that's going to be the highlight of your design. And if you forget to tie it off, there it goes. Cindy asks, would this type of bow work on a wreath that will be on front door with no screen? Absolutely. And I'll come back in the comment section and I'll post the, a picture of a wreath that we created with this live on Nick's seasonal decor. So you guys can kind of have a general idea as to how, you know, it turns out. You know, I think bows are beautiful all on their own. You could place it on a wine bottle, not something this big, obviously. But then again, you might be purchasing a massive wine bottle, right? I know Alex is smiling mm -hmm. about that. She would love it. So, um... Yeah, there's so many different ideas. This would work on a lantern. It would work on a wreath. Uh, with Christmas in mind, it would work on a present. But what I'm doing now is I'm taking my ribbon, folding it in half, and cutting from the middle out towards the wired edge. Deborah says, hello, Nick. Haven't seen nor talked to you in a while. Are you going to make the live pine swags this year? Uh, pine swags. So I don't remember doing that, but we're going to be doing lots of fresh products. Uh, we actually are getting our first dump truck load of fresh greenery uh, this Wednesday. Then we have lots and lots of centerpieces to ship out uh, a day or two after Thanksgiving. You guys bought 150 centerpiece kits, so we got to get cranking on those once the greenery comes in. Uh, but we're definitely going to be doing lots of fresh products as well. And if that's something you guys would like to see here on Bodabra, let me know. We work in bows on our fresh reeds, and we can definitely design a fresh wreath here on Bodabra. So now that we have all of our tails dovetailed, uh, now what we're doing is just fluffing out our ribbon. So just pulling those loops apart pulling those tails apart, making sure it's as pretty as you possibly can get it. And as kind of even as possible too. Paula says, love that ribbon. Sandra asked, what gauge wire do you use? Uh, so I'm not sure on the gauge of this, it doesn't say, but you know, it's not a thin, uh, thick gauge by any means. It's very thin wire, but it does have a coating on it. Can you get, well, the silver or the gold, that's the coating on it. I'm not sure what the product material is, but it makes it really strong having that coating on the top. Carrie Ann says, I can't wait to get my kit. Awesome. Yeah, lots of you guys bought those kits, and I'm excited to kind of design it live with you guys. So I'm going to do a couple of videos on that over a couple of nights. So if you can't tune in live, the replays will be posted, and then you'll have the chance to watch it live, uh, you know, the next night or so. There's our first bow. Something very simple, just using a few loops and a few tails. And this bow maybe took, I'd say, max three yards of ribbon. So this is what you can get using just a small amount of ribbon. See how pretty that is? Give some hearts if you guys love that. I love that ribbon, it's one of my favorites. So before we make another bow, we did uh, kind of start a candy cane. And last year, I want you guys to comment down, well, not really, because you know in about 0.5 seconds what color I'm talking about. Last year, I was on a rose gold kick. I love the color, it looks so Victorian and kind of elegant to me. So we're gonna be doing a rose gold candy cane and I'm excited to see how this turns out. So I've already started it by taking the ribbon, hawk gluing the end uh, of the ribbon to itself. And that keeps it in place, keeps it from kind of swirling around. And then what we can do is start wrapping our candy cane. So this is the part where I'm going to have to lift the, the candy cane, Alex. So it might be kind of an awkward angle. But all I'm doing is I'm taking it, I'll drop it to the ground. And just wrapping my candy cane, trying to make it as even as possible. I can't stress that enough, too, because you want it to be nice and precise. Alice says she saves all your videos. Love your designs. Oh, thank you, Alice. Leslie says, so cool. We have Kathy from Georgia watching. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, comment down below if you would like to win uh, a free roll of ribbon. Uh, Bodabra will be drawing one lucky winner. And also, if you don't mind giving this video a like and a share, I would appreciate it. Comment down below if these videos are helpful to you. You know, that's our main goal when doing these videos is to hopefully inspire you to create a bow. I can't tell you how many bow questions I get. I get hundreds a day. You know, how do I make this bow? I struggle at bows. I can make a wreath, but my bows always look awful. And my goal by Christmas is to have as many people master it as possible. We constantly are getting new people. Uh, so that's going to be an you know, ever long goal is teaching bow making. But, you know, once it clicks in your brain, you guys, for one certain technique, you know, from there on, you're going to remember it because it's kind of hard to forget once you remember. All right. So now we're nearing the kind of curl part of our candy cane. So again, just continue wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until it looks nice and full. So if you're working with a sheer ribbon, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, but if you are working with something a little bit more see-through, make sure you're kind of putting the, the loops a little bit closer together. So these we have kind of spaced out a good amount because it's not see-through. But if this ribbon was any more see-through, I would definitely recommend kind of either doubling up or placing it a little bit closer together because nobody wants to see their wires on their candy cane. 
We have Jan from Southwest Florida, would love to win. Welcome, Jan. Ray just bought her Bodabra, needs to get some ribbon to practice. Well, once you get that ribbon, you're mm -hmm. going to continue getting lots and lots of ribbon. Ribbon is definitely an addiction. Holly says, I can't thank you enough for helping me obtain my dream of designing from my home and friends. Oh, who said that? Holly. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate that. More than you know, actually. That's the biggest compliment I could ever hear. <laughs> Toyin so. says, loved all your tree designs. Can you do a video how you did the ribbon technique on your tree? So I posted that uh, a couple weeks ago. We actually posted last year's rose gold wreath, uh, Christmas tree, as well as um, kind of the big tree from two years ago. So we haven't actually finished all of our trees. We still have five trees left, you guys five trees. I don't know why I signed up for that, but once I said it, kind of have to keep going with it, right, Alex? Mm -hmm. So we've got five trees left to decorate for, uh, which is kind of fun. I, I like decorating for Christmas. Obviously, I love Christmas time. Uh, so we got five left to do. We did our 12-foot tree. We also did our um, budget-friendly tree. We did an all-white tree, not a flock tree, and that was a lot of fun, and we still have five more to do. So hopefully you guys are excited to see, because we're going to be doing kind of a house tour this year, which we've never done before. Uh, so I'm excited to show you guys that. But now all I'm doing is I'm cutting another length of wire. And now it's time to create the bow portion for our candy cane. So I'm just placing the wire directly in the middle like that. Connie asks, can you make a Christmas tree topper with the Bodabra? That's what we're going to do. Connie, you read my mind. That's what we're going to do next week, actually. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. Uh, it's either we do the tree topper next week or we work with some non-wired velvet. Uh, so let me know what you guys would rather see. I'm not sure we can do both in that time frame because I want to teach you guys as much as possible. Shirley says your videos and explanations on how to do things bring how to do things brings out the creativity monster in me. Awesome. <laughs> we have Sally from Ohio. Judy says I'm new from Jonesboro, Tennessee, and I love these few creative minutes with you. Love to win. Thank you, Judy. Welcome. We also have oh, oops, it just disappeared. Oh, there we are. Um we have TD who says, hi, I'm watching you from Italy. Here it is 1.30 a.m., but I absolutely love your decorations, kisses and hugs, and thanks for your gorgeous tutorials. Oh, thank you from Italy. I would love to visit Italy one day. Uh, me and Alex want to do kind of a whole tour of Europe. Uh, me and Alex weren't always close. You know, Alex definitely went through her terrible twos through 20s. Uh, <laughs> no, she was, she was just, we didn't get along that well. Uh, but then once we went to Greece together, that's really what kind of brought us together. Um, so we went for a school trip to Greece. We were in London for a couple of hours and Paris <laughs> for a couple of hours, but I would actually really love to spend a few weeks there. So that's the plan for one day. Uh, you know, we can always dream and it'll definitely happen. Hopefully. Dawn so. says tree topper, please. You got it. Paula says the tree topper. I need to make one from my new tree. All right. So let's just do a couple more loops of this. I want to keep it kind of simple today. I don't want to overcomplicate this. So we're just going to cut one or two more loops off of it. Forget how many we have so far, but this should be more than enough. I don't want to overdo it. All right. There's our final piece of ribbon. Now I'm just going to compress it. Bodabra does come with a wand. Uh, I say this pretty much in every video. This is a pair of scissors, but the wand is shaped like, you know, just elongated. And it slides into the top of your Bodabra and compresses your ribbon. Uh, each one of these tools, any tool you have in your shop, uh, or in the world for this matter, uh, you're going to be using it very different from other people. So you're just going to have to figure out what works best for your hands and your mind. So if you want to use the wand, you absolutely can. And even the way I'm teaching right now, you know, I know lots of people use the Bodab are kind of different than me. So you're just going to have to kind of fiddle with it, play around with it, and get it to your liking more than anything. Lots of people want the tree topper. <laughs> you got it. I'm excited for tree toppers. We're going to be designing a tree topper this week uh, in Nick's exclusive wreath community. And a couple of updates to you guys is we have reached our milestone on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube now. So I've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now. Uh, and we finally hit all three milestones. So we're going to be doing a giveaway with Nick's seasonal decor relatively soon. Uh, and opening up Nick's exclusive wreath community. So definitely subscribe to our email list. And we're also going to be sending out kind of some blog posts too. Um, Bodabra also has lots of awesome blog posts uh, on their design gallery too. So definitely check out that. But now just quickly dovetailing all of these tails. The more tails you have, the more chaotic it's going to be uh, dovetailing them. Because you always miss one or two, you guys. It's a given. Kimmy asks, what is the length of the candy cane? 
I believe it's 18 inches. So it's a Dollar Tree candy can. You know, it's nothing fancy, just very simple. You can pick them up Dollar Tree. You can order them online from Dollar Tree if you don't want to go in store uh, and ship to the store, or you can ship it directly to your house. You know, the choice is up to you, but I really like the candy canes because you can do so many different colors. You know, over the last few weeks, we've done three or four different versions here on Bodabra. Now I'm actually just going to snip off my wire. Just snip it right off. Now I'm going to take some hot glue using this little wand right here <laughs> and applying it to my candy cane. So I'm going to place the loop, the bow right about here or so. Apply a generous amount of hot glue. I don't skimp you guys. You know, I use a lot of hot glue. Take our bow and I'm just going to place it right there. So I'm not going to fiddle with it too much at this point because we still have to let it harden before we add our decorative picks. So I'm just going to compress it like that and set it to the side for, you know, the next couple of minutes while we design another bow. So let's clean up our workstation real quick. Lots of people say congratulations for hitting your milestones. Thank you, guys. I couldn't have done it without you, that's for sure. Jeannie says, hi, Nick and Alex. Alex, you are such a great sister. Thank you. I She's try. Okay. She's okay, Jeannie. <laughs> no, she really is. You know, I have the best family in the world helping me out uh, with my business. I can't ask for, you know, any bigger blessing, to be honest. Toyin says, if you put two candy canes together, you could make a heart for Valentine's you Day. You can, absolutely. Yeah, it's a great idea. Um, there's so many different ideas in this world, you guys. You know, you guys are so much more creative uh, than me. Some of the ideas and suggestions you guys have come up with over the years just blow my mind. But what we're going to do now is create a double ribbon bow. So cut another length of our wire. Place into the Bodabra. How many viewers do we got right now, Alex? 642. 642. Let's see if we can get to 700, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us live on Bodabra. And again, you can get your Bodabras from uh, Hobby Lobby as well as Bodabra.com. But we're going to take this ribbon. This is a two and a half inch. This came from Hobby Lobby. Create one loop. Actually, let's do something completely different. Why not, right, Alex? So we'll cut some long tails. I like to cut them rather long just because I never know exactly what I'm going to do with them. And this kind of looks like um, a baseball, doesn't it? This yeah, print. the stitching. Yeah, with the stitching. All right, so just going to place my tails in like that. Now we're going to create a couple loops on either side. I'm figuring let's do three on either side just to make kind of a decent full bow. And again, I don't really measure, but with this bow, since you're using kind of less loops, uh, kind of make it a little bit more even. I don't measure still, but, you know, kind of eyeball it. If it looks good to the eye, then it's good enough. Diane says, hi, I live in England, and I have had my Bodabra for years, and it's amazing. I love it. Awesome, Diane. We love to hear that. Lynn says hello from Singapore. Hi, Lynn. Okay, now our final loop. on either side. See, the one thing I don't like about this ribbon is that the stitching is not even on either side. Can you see that? One side's a little bit bigger than the other side. No. No, you I can't don't have my that. glasses on. Oh, yeah, Alex can't see. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, that's the one thing I don't like about this ribbon. So let's get a close up. Can you see uh, how yeah. one side's a little bit more bold than the other? So a ribbon like that isn't my all time favorite, but I really do like this one. So we're gonna use it. We also have this one and a half inch Sam's Club polka dot. And this polka dot, can you just tell by the texture, even though you can't see for the life of you, Alex? Can you see what kind of texture that is? It's felt, or soft, velvet. velvet. It's felt. It's felt. Sorry. <laughs> you know, it's velvet, but I love velvet <laughs> for Christmas time. And that's something you guys will see here on Bodabra in the next week or two. So over the next couple of weeks, we've got a tree topper. We also have uh, non-wired velvet bows. That's actually probably the bow I make the most all year long in those two weeks. Look at me, you guys. All year long, in those two weeks, I make fresh designs. That's more bows of one type of ribbon than I use all year. And you guys know I love my burlap ribbon um, and other types of ribbons, and I still use it more than the others. So we have two loops of this on either side. We're just going to create one small button loop. And this one's only going to be about an inch and a half or so, if that. Doesn't have to be much at all. Compress your ribbons. Take your wire from one side to the other. Create your little slip knot, pull really tight. Take it out of your Bodabra and secure from behind. So I like to give it, you know, three or four knots. Really make sure it's staying in place. We have Irma from El Paso, Texas. Despina from Waterbury, Connecticut watching. Sammy from Houston, Texas. Welcome. Missy says, I have that ribbon and 
one and a half inch white one and I love it. So you know what's funny actually is that me and Yaya went, this we got this roll of ribbon way before the, it was on sale at Hobby Lobby. Um, so me and Yaya went there for something else. And whenever I go, a good tip for you guys too, is whenever you go shopping, whether you need something or not, take advantage of the coupons that they offer. So Hobby Lobby always has a 40 off. So grab something off uh, using your 40% off coupon. So that's what we did with this ribbon. And I actually had the one and a half inch. And since I use one and a half inch so much, I was like, yeah, yeah, let's put it back and grab the two and a half inch. So maybe I got to go back and get the one and a half inch. What do you think, Al? I like it. I like the big one. I think they're both nice. So they yeah. both would be nice. But I, I love one and a half inch ribbon. I don't know what it is. I think it just has a natural flow to it that you really can't get uh, on a two and a half inch. But then again, I'm weird. But that's the size I like. And look at that. It's all about the fluffing, you guys. I think that looks pretty. What do you guys think? Give some hearts if you like that bow. And if you haven't commented down below you'd like to win, definitely do so in the next couple of minutes. We've got a couple minutes left before they draw a lucky winner. So that's our third bow. Let's create or finish up our candy cane now. So now what we got to do is just separate those loops, give everything a good fluff. This ribbon is kind of you know, flimsy, but we're going to make it work, you guys. Um, you know, we all purchase rolls of ribbons that we don't absolutely love, and we can always make them work. You know, never be afraid of trying it out. If it still doesn't look right to you, you know, then you can throw out the roll or give it to somebody. But for the time being, this ribbon is still okay because I think it matches really nicely. Right? Doesn't that look like it matches nicely? Yeah, it blends well. Yeah. So fluff, 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 dovetail, trim. Lift up your candy cane. This tail is still too long. And if your ribbon's ever kind of floppy like this, my biggest tip is actually to cut it smaller. So if you're dealing with a very thin ribbon, don't be creating tree toppers with it. Don't be doing, you know, exceptionally large bows with it. Make it as small as you can so that the ribbon or the, the wire in the ribbon doesn't have to support a lot of weight. So does that make sense? I think it does, right? Yeah. Don't be using a thin ribbon for anything super substantial. All right, so now let's add some berries to it. So I just picked out a few simple berries. I didn't want to overcomplicate it. And I'm thinking we'll go with these ones today. Aren't those pretty, Al? Yeah, I like them. I really like those too. So now we need some wire snips right here. Snip them off. And it's not going to take this entire bush, but this bush, uh, this spray was $9.99 from Hobby Lobby as well. So Lots we'll just... of people would love to win tonight. Awesome, you guys. So we're just going to snip them in half. We don't need the full length. Dip them in our glue skillet and work them into our bow. And this is something I wouldn't recommend putting upright at this point in time. Let it sit. Let gravity kind of keep it in place for now. If you try to hang this up, you guys, the chances of it falling or uh, sliding off and the glue kind of dripping everywhere is pretty high. Uh, so at this point in time, definitely be careful. Don't be putting too much force on it. Heather says, hi from Montana. You are making me so excited to get started on my Christmas bows. <laughs> awesome, Heather. That's what we're here for. We're here to kickstart Christmas. I, well, then again, I could talk about Christmas January 1st, you know. Uh, Christmas time is the best time of year in my eyes. I absolutely love it, and I go crazy for it. So we just added a couple simple little berries to it and kept it simple. I think that looks really pretty at this point. Again, I'm going to leave this on my table so the glue hardens and we don't lose all of our pretty berries. What's the point of adding them if they fall off? So put that to the side for now. We've got five minutes left, you guys. So we're going to create, bless you. Excuse me. We're going to create a couple more bows if we can, but definitely one more. So we're going to snip our wire again. Stacy says, I love how well you explain everything. You're amazing. Thank you, Stacy. I appreciate it. I try my best, you guys. I really do. Grandma Brown asked, how do you hang the candy canes? Well, Grandma Brown, you asked a great question. And one thing I can tell you, and I talk a lot about this on my page, is that I very, very rarely ever use hangers. I shipped um, one design this morning that had a hanger because we kind of constructed it from start to finish. None of my reeds come with hangers. None of the candy canes come with hangers. The candy cane, I just place it on the command strip. And I'm a huge advocate of command strips. And maybe... Maybe they should sponsor me. We'll get in touch with Command and see if they can help me out on that. Um, but they, they work so nicely, you guys. They're the best things to hang your reeds. The hook that I have on my wall has been going strong for a long time. I took it off for a couple of days. Didn't leave any marks or you know scuffs or marks at all on my wall. Uh, my wall looks perfectly fine. And I have probably 50, 60 Command strips down here in my basement on all of my walls. And nothing. Nothing, you guys. So we created a traditional bow. 
uh, we, no, we created a funky bow. We created a uh, funky bow in our candy cane with things inserted. We created kind of a two ribbon bow. Now let's create a traditional bow. Thank you, everyone. So this traditional bow is going to be traditional with non-traditional colors, which is kind of funny because black isn't a traditional Christmas color. Um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to mix it up. And I really like this ribbon. You know, for years I didn't, and I bought like 10 rolls of it. And I kind of like it now. So we got to design a wreath with it. We have our winner tonight. Who's our lucky winner? So congratulations to Pam Koch Hunt. Congratulations, Pam. So send Bodabra a message. Uh, and you can choose your color choice of red, silver, or gold for the scrunchy ribbon, and they'll mail it out to you. So con uh, congrats. And like I said before, you guys, every week Bodabra does give away a free roll of ribbon. So week to week, you know, if you didn't win this week, you might win next week. You know, the chances of winning, you know, I'd say are relatively high, you know. So definitely tune in each week. But now all we're doing is creating a loop, and this is the bow I make the most at Christmas time. So, you know, I know that there's so many different bow techniques out there. I know there is, you guys. Uh, I've always been kind of a plain Jane, simple type of guy. Uh, if it works and it looks beautiful, you know, of course we could try lots of different styles. But at Christmas, traditional is definitely the way to go for a lot of bows because it's just, I don't know, it just looks so natural hanging on a wreath. So we're just going to probably do three or four loops on either side and then we'll hang it up and show you guys. So again, if you're just tuning in, Bodabra is sold out of Bodabras on Amazon, uh, as well as Michael's. So check out Hobby Lobby and check out uh, Bodabra.com to get your roll of wire and your Bodabra. Tracy says, I love that ribbon. If you are ever sick of it, I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Tracy. We go through rib uh, ribbon like water here. Uh, I used to have so many rolls of ribbon, and I feel like this year you guys, you know, both me went overboard with wreath making and you guys went overboard with, you know, buying all of my wreaths. So we have, we have to place a big order for lots of ribbons now. But, you know, like I said earlier in the night, we do have kind of a surprise coming your way. And I don't want to talk too much about it until, you know, it arrives for me. But stick around because we have some exciting news for you guys. I'm going to take my wire out with my ribbon. And I like to tie it outside of the Bodabra. You can absolutely tie it within your Bodabra. Uh, but like I said earlier, we all do things slightly different. So just kind of try it. You know, if you like it better inside, do it inside. Grandma Brown says, I tell everyone I know about your fantastic videos. Thank you, Grandma Brown. <laughs> Ugly, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's time to make it beautiful. What's the word called, Alex? Fluffing. Fluffing. Fluffing is the most important step with bow making, you guys. My philosophy on it is you can be working with the cheapest ribbon, um, or the most expensive ribbon. And if you're not fluffing it right, it makes absolutely no difference. So make sure you're giving your, your loops, you know, a nice pull, get any of the creases out, any of the kinks out. That way it looks the best that you can kind of get it. Pull those long tails forward and match your traditional bow using non-traditional colors. So we kind of mix it up here. And this is my go-to, but this is the only bow I do for my fresh reeds. Uh, I don't offer any, any other type of bow. Uh, so next week or the week after, we will be teaching you how to make this bow using non-wired velvet and i know lots of designers only use wired uh as i do for artificial but with, when it comes to fresh i pretty much strictly use non-wired uh, velvet so hopefully you guys are excited to see that so let's do a quick little recap we created a traditional non-traditional bow we created a rose gold candy cane i love rose gold you don't love rose gold that much alex do you well no you love the christmas tree in that color scheme yeah i love it um yeah rose gold candy cane we also created this kind of two ribbon bow with three loops on either side and then two loops of the one and a half inch on the inside and then a little button loop with some long tails we also created and i think this is it right we created uh, a funky bow and this bow would look great on a lantern it would look great on a wreath and it would also look great on presents definitely presents of anything i think that would look awesome so that's what we're also going to teach, too, is how you guys can kind of spruce up your presence. So thank you all so very much for joining me tonight on Bodabra. We are live each and every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, creating lots of different bows and kind of a simple project e uh, each week. Uh, check out Bodabra's design gallery. That way you guys can kind of see ideas, see posts, and kind of share your, share your bows with them as well. So thank you, Bodabra, for having me as a guest tonight, and I'll see you all next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Bye, everyone. Good night, everyone.